Hi, welcome to a product test and review by Robojax. In this video, we are going to test this boost converter that has been claimed to be 150 watt. We are going to test it with different voltages, input and output, connecting it to the load. We also will uh, measure the efficiency, the difference between input and output, and how much power loss it has. Let's get started with this. This is the boost converter. The rated current for this one is uh, 6 ampere maximum, but the total power based on the seller value is 150 watt. We are going to check and see it. And uh, the input that this can accept is 10 to 32 volts, and the output will be a little higher, 12 volts to 35 volts. The module seems to have very solid belt and it has one signature 05kj uh, so that could be the pcb designer or maybe the manufacturer it doesn't have any model number they just put the power it's sold on on ebay i will provide you the link with different prices this is canadian dollars four dollars something 398 and 311 so 461 dollar canadian so this is around uh, 461 is around 350 or 380 US dollars at the moment, which is November of 2018. This has uh, four terminals, two for the input on this side, it says N and it says plus. So this is a positive and negative for the input and here it says out. And that is these two are for the output and then we also have a, an LED. That this is the main inductor and voltage can be set using this uh, 10 kilo multi turn potentiometer. The main component that handles all the current and the conversion is this MOSFET STP 80NF70. This is from uh, ST Semiconductor, as you can see, the uh, maximum drain current is 98 ampere that's huge but it needs big uh, heat sink and the drain source voltage is 68 volts so this could have had up to 68 volts output but due to other design capability uh, it's limited and as you can see here the drain source uh, resistance is 82 milliohm and that is very little it reduces the amount of uh, drop or power dissipation on the device. I will provide you also the link for this MOSFET and this was the MOSFET and this is on this side we have a shot key diode which is part of the design this is STPS 2045 here is a data sheet for it this is also from ST Semiconductor and we have two diodes into one package the anodes this is a package that uh, we are using in this design this with the, without this one has a corner this doesn't have a corner so we have one anode and the other anode on two sides and cathode is at the middle two diodes so this is part of a design and the maximum current each can handle is 10 ampere and on the other side we have this uc 3843 this is from texas instrument that's a current mode pulse width modulation that is used uh, with this device and here is a data sheet for this I will also provide you the link for this this is a chip that we are using and uh, th this is a chip that is used on this device the 0 0.1 ohm resistor here as well power resistor to detect perhaps the current and also the output current has been labeled here we have also standoffs that's nice so you don't have to worry about it when you put it these component need protection so it can be uh, protected uh, very well length of the device is 65.1 millimeter the width of the heat sink is 47.2 millimeter width of the pcb is 36.7 millimeter the height of this device including the standoff is 26.3 millimeter and if you're interested in weight, it weighs 63.3 grams. Now I've connected this uh, module, the boost converter. These two are the input connected and the voltage is shown here, 15.5 volts. 
the LED is on, it is powered up, and these two are connected to the load. I'm using actual electronic load. This is the Rigal DL3130 electronic load that I'm using for this purpose. And the two wires from the output of my circuit is connected in here. And it shows now 2 volts, uh, 20 volts and 2 ampere. It can be turned on and turned off. It just shows the voltage. Now there is no current. Let's start our test now. The input voltage is 24 volts as you can see here. Currently this is producing 35 volts. The maximum output that you get from any voltage is 35 volts. If the input is 35, this will be also 35. Now let's put with a max because it's not a standard. I'm gonna do five ampere. And here as you can see, The input is 7.67 and then the total power of the input is 185 and as you can see the output power is 174. So that much loss happens, almost 9 watt loss is happening here. It's very cool at the moment. I'm going to in increment it 6 amp. The power jumped, current here a little jump, because we just went one amp. One more ampere, now we are at seven. And as you can see the input is 10 ampere, 10.7 and 258 watts. And this is 244. Slowly the device is getting warmer. Let's go 8. Also, I'm monitoring the output voltage, how much the voltage drops. This diode is getting hotter now. The MOSFET is getting hotter a little. This diode is good, but this is getting hot. We are at 8 ampere. The MOSFET is getting hotter a little. This diode is good, but this is getting hot. We are at 8 ampere. Still good. Now it's extremely, it's getting hot. And we have 12 uh, ampere, 12.2 ampere at the input, 294 watts. It's getting very hot now. I cannot even touch it. Momentarily, I can go 9 amp. Now it's 9 amp. At 9 amp, it draws 13.8 at the input and 333 watts. Now you can see here it's 312. Extremely hot. So let's go back to 8. The capacitors are also getting very hot. I went to 7 watt. 7 ampere with 7 and 34 so this is 243 watt let's reduce it to 6 so 6 ampere if we do the calculation let's reduce it to 6 so 6 ampere if we do the calculation so this can easily handle up to 8 ampere uh, with ter uh, 34 volts at the output but 6 ampere is nothing it's, it, it runs very well so uh, 209 watt as you can see now I have put the input to 30 volts as you can see the power dissipation is 216 watt and output is 208 watt around uh, 8 watt is dissipated here still the device is hot but I can hold my finger for a few moments
I've set now the input voltage to 18 volts as you can see and the output voltage is shown here 34.7 volts that's 35 volts with some so that's a drop that maximum that we could get and as you can see the input current is 12.57 12.5 ampere 228 watt and this is 208 this is very hot at the moment getting extremely hot so let's go to 5 ampere now 173 still below the claimed current if you want to keep it 150 then it should be around 4 amp so at 5 amp this is getting very hot with 18 volts untouchable it's very hot it's very hot here 151 minus uh, this power 139 12 volt is being dissipated input voltage 18 volts output 24 volts at the moment we are at 4 ampere so the input is 101 watt and that is 96 watt 0.5 divided by 101.5 95% efficiency at the moment it is hot but it seems slowly getting better 101.5 minus 96.5 so 5 watt is dissipated at the moment now input is 15 volts and output is 24 volts at 4 ampere let's go to 30 volts now 15 volts input 30 volts output exactly double that that's the input power 131 this is 120 9 watt is dissipated here 91 percent so efficiency dropped which the input and output is double so huge difference i, I just changed it to 5 amp The temperature has increased, it got very hotter. So, 4 amp is good. Now, the input voltage is 12 volts and the output is 30 volts with 4 ampere. 120.5 divided by 134 efficiency has dropped by 1% or 2% so it's 89.980 that's 90% the device is getting faster hotter I changed it to 3 amp
Now, trimp for 12 volts input, 30 volts output is okay. Now 12 volts input, 24 volts output, voltage is doubled. At the moment it's 3 amperes, let me increase it to 4. Uh, with 4 amp we are reading 106 watt and here we are reading 96.6. 107 watt, 106 watt, so 96.7 divided by 106, 91% efficiency, 4 amp is getting hotter, extremely hot, I'm going 3 amp, Seventy two point five divided by nine seventy nine point five ninety one per cent efficiency. So input if input is twelve and four you can go only three amp. More than that it's getting extremely hot. Now twelve volts input, eighteen volts output, the next industry standard voltage. 3 amp looks normal let's go 4 so we're at 4 ampere let's check the efficiency 72.1 divided by 77.2 so the uh, efficiency increase 93 percent which means it will get hotter less hotter Now I've connected 9 volts and it doesn't go anywhere. So from 9 volts you always can get lower, not higher. I don't know if you can hear the click. So as it is advertised, input is 30 volts, so that's good. So be below 10 it doesn't work, so I tested it at 12. For conclusion, this device can handle if the input and output voltage has big difference, it will go for 3 ampere, but if it's getting closer, it can go up to 4 ampere. For example, if you go from 18 to 24, you can get a 4 ampere, but uh, for higher currents you need continuous cooling some kind of fan that blows here and cool this off all the tests that I've done was without any fan just um, the module like this so it's your decision to see but this device cannot handle and at all currents and 150 watt as you saw thank you for watching this was a test and review of this boost converter with a claimed 150 watt I will have a lot of other videos testing available famous modules. Please thumb up the video if you like it and also subscribe so you can get updates of my upcoming videos.